Dayton Audio 18 inch Ultimax. These are where they used to be more popular. Uh, the rumor that I heard was that Tilo Stompler of TC Sounds helped design this series of woofer basically after uh, some of his designs that he did for TC Sounds and then later for Audio Pulse, which was his uh, secondary brand. And um, then basically passed on the design and the, the sources to Dayton, which then picked up the heavy lifting uh, as of investment and things like that. There's really no investment uh, except for maybe graphics and some stuff uh, uh, China would give you anyway. So they didn't go with a, uh, uh, a real front gasket. This is uh, rubber, which I actually like. This is nice. This rubber uh, high roll surround or fat roll, I should say. Uh, and then this uses the two piece. Somebody was asking me about the um, the Recoil Audio um, Echo Pro series, which is the PW series. Uh, this is what they use, which is a, um, it's a, technically this is the cone, but it's really a cone body. And then the rest of this acts as a cap. This is a glass fiber honeycomb uh, laminate that they use to basically make the rest of the cone and it also acts as the cap at the same time. And as you can see, this is just glued to that, probably epoxy. Uh, and then this is, um, it's pretty, I can still bend it, but it's pretty strong, it's strong enough. Uh, the leads are pretty thin. Again, these are made for like home theater. So they're not made for really heavy duty, um, <laughs> duty um, action. Like, you know, and this is good for like maybe 1500 watts if I'm looking at the motor. Motor looks like it's a triple stack, pretty standard of uh, three quarter inch slugs. I'll have to pull the boot off and look at it. Um, uh, for some reason, they put the adapter on there, which I think is just to raise this up uh, for the secondary spider. They could have just used uh, better quality spiders uh, and just use one. And then that way they would have saved the adapter time. But um, this is a gimmick uh, is the secondary spiders. Again, I've told you the difference that keeps this thing linear is the distance between here, which is one fu uh, fulcrum right? It's a focus point. It's a, a flex point. And then the, the annulus, the, the surround, the difference between here and here is what keeps this thing linear, not between those two. That's all bullshit. Don't listen to fucking Ed Showtime Electronics, idiot. Uh, I'm going to remove this. You don't need this. Uh, let me show you the back. So there you go. We're going to keep a D2. Uh, this is the, um, let's see if mine's a little longer. This looks like a 50 millimeter. Uh, it's pretty close. I think mine's 60, so this is probably like a 55. Um, somebody bottomed it out, and they, you know, you can see it does a little bit of discoloration and a little bit of scraping. They just pushed it a little too far. Uh, this would benefit from using the TI frame, but we're just going to use it for uh, this right now. And you still get about two, two and a half inches of peak to peak uh, mechanical, and then probably about an inch and a half, maybe two inches linear uh, on the uh, X Max. Uh, we're going to change the terminals too. These are, again, small for home theater. Uh, we're just going to put the big four gauge ones on there because they look rad. And this looks like it's the, um, doesn't, I think this is just a generic. I don't even think this is the SCAR one that they came out with. But uh, RE Audio, uh, which was uh, Mark and Scott, uh, Scott, which is now with Phi, and then Mark, I'm sure, went over to China and just retired. Um, they, they're the ones that came up with this. They used it on the original, like back in 2000. They're the ones that tooled up this frame with the four terminals. Uh, but there was, there was not an 18 inch 12 spoke. Uh, they're the ones that first did this. I don't think this is the same tooling. It might be, uh, that would be free, easy money, uh, to get a royalty off this, uh, if they were using it. But, um, I don't know for sure. Scar also tooled, tooled up their version of the same frame. Uh, there's a slightly different, I think I sold the version I had, um, so and if I get another one for the library, that's fine. But basically, it's the same thing. Uh, I'll just use my um, quad leaded flat, uh, fat flat. I think that's what I call it. I come up with a bunch of bullshit, dumb uh, acronyms like uh, Rockford and all those guys and JL. Same same guys. Um, uh, eight inch uh, spider, just a single good one, which is I think a I think mine is a two layer, um, and uh, we'll use the Slim Jim. Uh, flat copper coil. I'll give you the dimensions on this as well. This I'm right now I'm, we're selling for about 60 bucks uh, Which is market price just because the price of copper is up and the price of manufacturing is up as well We're gonna go ahead and have, I'm gonna have uh, Ashley uh, Chisel this off this front gasket and there's also a back gasket a little foam thing that we're gonna chisel off And then we're just gonna do a wrap around so for better cosmetics, but I wanted to show you that uh, that cone insert this was uh, 
I don't know if Larry F was in charge of that, but I, well, he made the, the executive decision on it, which was um, if you look at the Diamond Audio, actually it came out first, I think on the Alpine Type X or yeah. Yeah, Type X used that, it was like a plastic skeleton, which was basically no cone. And then they used um, uh, the front piece, which acted as the cone and the dust cap. And then the rest of the supports were basically a plastic uh, skeleton, uh, which again is a cost savings measure, which again, you're saving what, 50 cents, maybe $2, like just buy a paper cone, buy a real paper cone. Um, this is not bad. I, I, I understand why they did it. Uh, just because a real cone would probably cost more and doing a cap like this, uh, you know, works out for them. Uh, personally, with uh, when we get Mac fully up and running, I'll actually have a modular system uh, with a removable cap uh, that you can add to each cone. And if you want to change the color, you can change the color. But that's a few years down the road. But um, I'm going to go ahead and finish this out and this should be done by next weekend. So that's the uh, Dayton Ultimax. Uh, is it a good buy? It used to be when you could buy it for $200. Now you can't get it for, I think it's just under 300. And then for a recon, we charged 180. So, which is pretty reasonable, but, uh, I love you guys. I'll talk to you later.